the issues of sanitation in Kerala gets reflected in Alapi also. One is the freely flowing black and grey water, rampant pollution of water bodies, septage management uh, by fly-by-night operators. So all this gets a problem. And what we need is a deeper awareness about these things and action to kind of take it forward. Uh, coming back to Alapi, there is an increasing number of roads, you know, in the last 20-30 years, the mode of transportation also changed. Earlier it was through, through small boats and big boats and you know, and this was part of the larger Kutunad ecosystem. But that's all changed you know, over a period of time. So roads began to be developed and these are the linear features, you know. So every canal became part of a road also. So canals got encroached. And then over a period of time, you know, the when there was no usage for this because Kerala Water Authority water came and then you know people began to uh, so because of that water bathrooms could be built in houses so then that use was gone so slowly the utility of the canals came down and then this slowly became dumping ground of waste and one of the major utility of the canals is as drains So these were our, um, you know, kind of major objectives of our winter school. One, map the natural and man-made drains and canal systems using mobile apps. Identify discharge points and hotspots for both solid and liquid waste management. Household survey to understand the sanitation infrastructure, services, practices and socio-economic profile of the uh, households. Put this in a GIS platform and use this for the youth campaign, reclaiming of our canals, that is the canalopy. So these were the five major, so from Alibag and Nalimangad, what we found was, we developed these mobile apps in the, during the winter school, uh, which then you, you, this is the, this is the ODK collect, which you will be introduced to you today. So we have another one called OSM tracker. So you go with your mobile phone, you can track the entire linear kind of a canal and then you have, can have point source of information also like if there is a waste dump there you can take a photograph and you can note it down also and this ODK collect also you can actually kind of you know uh, do it in your mobile phone the survey then the, you don't need any data entry it can be directly you know kind of imported to Excel and you can have the analysis done and this can be you know kind of put into a GIS platform you can visualize it also. So th this will be one of the major takeaway for you. This is the skills that you will learn from this winter school. And in summer school, I told you, um, we actually scaled it up to 300 students. We mapped the entire stretch. I'm not going into the details of that because we'll be uh, kind of uh, putting it. So these are the kind of principles that we work on. One is the principle of subsidiarity. That means whatever can be done at the lowest level should be done there. At the individual level, at the household level, do it there. The rest of it can come to community and only the rest can go to the town level. So that is the principle of subsidiarity. Second is the non-invasive technology options, especially less energy intensive, less capital intensive, you know, kind of technology options. Third is local capacity building for even for planning, for technology operations, for institution building, all this can we have local capacity building, and then uh, local institution building for management. You know, you don't you don't need other external institutions like government institutions or uh, or market institutions to come into that. Can people's institutions, you know, kind of manage these things? Uh, social regulation and accountability. You know, one is state regulation by policing. You have Environmental Protection Act which tells you all water body should not be polluted. But why is being polluted? Because regulation by policing is very difficult. But if we kind of control each other, that is social regulation. For example, groundwater regulation in India has worked because of this. You know, many of the, uh, you, you must have heard about Anna Hazare, you know, the Ralegaon Siddhi experiment. You know, people came together and decided that you will, you know, kind, you, you won't kind of, dig tube wells, you won't uh, cultivate sugarcane like you know water uh, uh, 
water gushing crops. And that's how groundwater could be regulated. So people have to come together. So people in the canal sheds have to come together and tell that, you know. So in our final canal shed, we found that there is a 49 households which are very marginal households, ex-manual scavengers. They were kind of freely polluting it because they don't have the wherewithal to do that. So now we are given them a system. Then we found that there are three other, you know, big polluters. Two of them were catering units. So one of them was given notice by our, um, you know, environmental engineer, who is a friend of us, who works with us for a lot, the Pollution Control Board engineer, Mr. Biju. He, you may meet him also. Uh, so they, they shifted it to a next town or a kind of more of a village kind of a thing where, you know, uh, th there is no such kind of a canal polluting kind of an environment there. And uh, the other one is still we are in the process of doing it. So there are only three major sources of pollution to that lake and there are 800 households there. So how can you kind of regulate the minority major producers by the larger community? That's where the institution building becomes and social regulation becomes. And the last one is, can you incentivize these things? Like, you know, whatever interventions that you have like biogas bins or, you know, plastic collection and all this, can you incentivize it with jobs? So that people who want to continue these jobs will make ensure that this will continue. So green jobs. Uh, so these were the aspects. We did a complete civil engineering survey. We did a socioeconomic study. We, we did a willingness to pay study and water quality studies. And the last is uh, big establishments like, you know, commercial establishments and industries. What are the kinds of... So these are the five major elements. So we had something like 300 students. So 60 of them could kind of, you know, look at each of these issues. This is the level of commitment that we had. And uh, so drain mapping was the first one I told you. So you, you go with the tracker and then these are point source of pollution which you can mark. You can take a photograph also and upload it. So this was the first element. Components of civil survey, de contour desurging slope, width of the canal, sidewall protection, bottom, depth of canals, thick of sludge. So these are the various canals that we have marked. Uh, basically civil engineering uh, methodology with staff readings and you know, um, uh, that you know, that uh, the basic civil engineering survey we did. This is the result, length of the canal varies from 2.1 kilometers to uh, one, one, 165 meters. So our pilot canal is uh, the this one which is actually the second biggest canal 1.5 kilometers what you will be doing is the biggest canal that is 2.1 kilometers shadamini that is the canal that you are going to do volume of sludge also we have calculated and you know sidewall protection needed also we have calculated you know actually what does this bring this brings in a lot of transparency and the government has also kind of, you know, the irrigation department also has tried to do this. When, you, when they do it, it becomes 10 times more. That's the contractor engineer nexus. Here, engineering students, you know, kind of proved that they can do the design. And the irrigation department gave them a software, which can then give the kind of estimates also. So we proved that even engineers can, engineering students can do this up to the estimates. So two things, one, better analysis at the local level. Otherwise, you know, the, the contractors, people won't do such good analysis to kind of arrive at this. Second thing is transparency of governance. Now they can actually kind of ask the irrigation department, ask the municipality, this is not it. We know what is the cost of it which can be, which can actually bring in. So if next year also the same students or the, 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 college, the same college sends these students, ask these questions, over a period of three, four years, governance should improve, isn't it? So that's our major strategy that we are kind of, and socioeconomic survey is all these, you'll be kind of dealing with this, so I'm not going to do this. We can actually get such kind of maps out of this. 
um, findings are not very very important you know because these are all kind of findings that you know one of the major things is that you know 83 percent of the people thought that they had septic tanks and then we train them how to kind of you know identify whether it's a septic tank or not then we found that that's, that's only 32 percent which are septic tanks another major thing was you know distance um, so um, 750 water samples were collected by our students which is a very transparent exercise there is a hydrogen sulfide vial you know into which this water can be poured and we kept it in their own households so after two days when you go back if it turns black that means there is E. coli contamination bacterial contamination which is actually a sign of fecal contamination so that means toilet and this water source are connected so 93 percent of the wells had E. coli in Alapi and then 82 percent of the shallow tube wells and 18 percent of the uh, you know uh, no no 37 percent of the um, uh, 39 percent of the Kerala Water Authority supplied water also had. So this means it's serious that you know that, that water quality is into serious proportions. Huh? So this is one of the major findings that came out. Another thing was you know average distance between the septic tanks and the wells in your own plot. What municipality has given is 7.5 meters and then we found that you know almost 53% uh, of the APL household that is above poverty line and 60% of the BPL household below poverty households it is actually you know below, below 7.5 meters. So the, it is actually a very serious issue. And then this is 7.5 to 15 meters is also that because below 15 meters is actually dangerous in a sandy terrain. So this is also another another thing that kind of came out. <coughs> another thing that we did was you know, these are all kind of scope of the you know GIS that we are using. Um, you know people actually many of them segregate and people who are segregating <coughs> many of them do it at the household level also as aerobic bins as biogas units and things like that the rest of it goes to public aerobic bins uh, so we try to look at what is the average distance of this then we found that actually it's okay 340 to 830 meters and now we can actually kind of plan better the the distance you know can you reduce the kind of you know aerobic bins is one question that we are asking then utilization is very very small like 8 percent to 22 percent so another question is can we increase the kind of usage of this this and kind of individual systems so this is the scope of our you know kind of study that we are going to you are also going to do all this the very curious thing 85 percent of the households find no utility of the canals and the major utility of the canals is as waste dumps which also kind of very curious understanding. We had several recommendations which I am not going to. Environmental study of institutions, commercial and industrial institutions also were studied. This is what you should be concentrating on. Pilot interventions in one canal. We will be seeing all this. So this is that canal which is uh, 1.6 kilometers long. We wanted to kind of demonstrate that this is possible. I told you there are, there are three major interventions. So this is what we did, technological interventions is you know primary cleaning is done then we found that actually 70 percent of that gets cleaned because aeration happens you know when the flow happens and then sidewall protection maintenance through solid and liquid waste management construction of an FSTP which is actually on the we are planning that. Solid waste management inorganic and organic, inorganic goes to door to door a plastic collection swap shops which can actually kind of get these things done strengthening the existing scrap dealers because they are the existing chain so we should actually utilize them and then community level incinerators for uh, you know sanitary pads and things like that organic it goes to individual systems like biogas and bio bins in own houses individual houses cluster level systems like what we see seen as the uh, uh, you know that ACU that I uh, sh showed you liquid waste management black water has to be 
uh, into individual septic tanks, better septic tanks and cluster level units like DWATs that, that we will show you. Uh, this letter will be explaining you how they constructed this, flow measurements were done, quantity was wastewater sampling was done and then they arrived at a unit you know a cluster level unit that experience we will explain to you tomorrow. Uh, some of the scope you know so this is black water disposal methods in the pilot watershed you will see that you know leach pit means it is directly going into leach pit and then it is polluting the ground water that is the red ones and green ones is when you have a septic tank and there is only one community septic tank that we are building. So look at the observation, the observation is that majority of the toilets are opening up into as a leach pit. That means our groundwater is getting contaminated that is why 93 percent of the wells have E. coli. So this is a visual representation. When earlier I showed you as tables it is not this impressive. And this is actually both sides of the canal. So we took two rows of the canal which actually showed why the canal is you know getting polluted. So you will uh, kind of you know do the same exercise in the second canal. Yes, two rows of households we took. Actually you know our uh, civil engineers 19 of them they are, they are doing this survey on two rows of the households in even in your canal that you are going to do. So they will have that data because that needs a bit more of you know plan of that and because we need to know what system has to be installed and down. You will be actually taking data from outside but during compilation we will bring in all this data together. Uh, this is the uh, black water outfall you know who is actually you know uh, this is no outfall is this is outfall into the canal into so all these are kind of dangerous ways of you know bringing water out. A grey water disposal methods this is also you know directly to the drain is the red the red ones are and then blue are directly to the ground also that also will ultimately pollute the kind of ground water. So majority of the systems are not safely disposed. This is the plot area size where we say that you know uh, less than 3 cents is the kind of the dark ones and you know so, so the lighter ones are only very few in a way. So you know this is actually again it is social you know are there better off households how are they kind of disposing their ways and both this should have very different types of interventions because if it is a BPL household we can give them a subsidy. Uh, so it is for that. So merging these uh, you know will give us some kind of uh, understanding for interventions what kind of interventions do we need. So this is a heat map where we saw that the toilet waste is disposed into a septic tank and a sock pit. So majority of them are sock pits. So once over a period of time in the next 3-4 months if we kind of make this another map all the red dots will come down isn't it that is called a heat map. So this can be a community monitoring tool. So if after 6 months after our intervention we again geotag because these are all geotag households. Since you are going with your mobile app you know each of the households is geotag. So if you go to the same household again it will become green. So this exercise becomes a heat map becomes an exercise of community monitoring also. This is a, another serious thing scientific text unscientific ways of disposal majority of them is red. So our exercise over a period of time should be to make it all into green. Huh? Solid waste management uh, this is the kind of uh, cl cluster level aerobic units that you have uh, where you will be seeing this you will be kind of you know uh, you will get more interesting you know kind of ideas about this in the next solid waste management uh, uh, session that we have. This is the biogas bins and uh, 
plastic collection what we are doing she is collecting it you know we gave them bags for a month two weeks and we have collected that and now we know one we know which brands are actually the kind of most polluting second we know what kinds of plastics are kind of happening and which one can go into the market like for example the our uh, the the milk the milk one you know uh, that has a huge market actually so plastics are divided into kind of some i think uh, sridhar will be explaining that today you know how this so for that we did this uh, kind of you know a collection two times so we have a fairly fairly good idea of you know what's the type of plastics and what could be the market of that and the quantity con quantity of that across various class of households so we'll be planning this monthly collection of this so these are the wards the three wards that are there in the pilot area we have divided them into polygons and then now we we, we are kind of these are the points from which plastic will be collected in the future this may be a small shop or a kind of anganwadi or something like that which actually so that you know people doesn't have to walk more than 80 to 100 meters to give this which is which becomes an incentive for people to kind of you know give that which we have to expand it to all the wards now this is this is the aerobic bins which are there you know this is the distance of the nearest aerobic bin from various houses so we have to make it all light now more, but the, the, you can see all the aerobic bins are outside our study area so if you bring in m new aerobic bins where will you be placing it and how much of this can you may, may become light is one question that we can ask this is the segregation now you know this in this cluster there's no segregation happening at all so in this entire what we can see where we should concentrate on in our future interventions to make segregation better so this visual tool can be very interesting one for identifying second as a heat map to kind of monitoring tool this is a pad disposal grids collection points then green income generation what it can go into these are the canal shed committees which we are planning you know so every 250 meters of the canal there will be a committee the, and and then uh, there will be three people who are going to kind of work in these committees which will have a larger committee so there's an institution building for social regulation that's happening we've already started the institution building fecal search management you know we will have uh, two sessions on fecal search management how is it presently done and how it can, could be done this is called the honey suckers you know you, earlier you should it used to be manual scavenging which is actually a very inhuman practice so this is a kind of heavy suction it will come to this and then there should be a fecal cell treatment unit which can safely so you shit it we take it satisfaction guaranteed this is the first regional based uh, FSTP which is being done in Devanahalli near Bangalore airport. So we took all the councillors to there and now they are convinced about it. So they have identified a plot of land also for that and from the Amrit project they have put in you know kind of funds also into it. So hopefully within kind of one year we will have an FSTP in Alapi. Can Alapi, I think you will hear more, more about that how this initiative is coming up so these are our conclusions what have we achieved a better understanding of the physical system sanitation practices water quality pollution hotspots shelf of technology options institutional requirements for better management limitations of the regulatory environment for example is it pollution control board is it municipality or is it water authority we are trying to figure out you know what is the regulator Methodology and tools in place to conduct participatory urban sanitation studies. Created awareness about canalopy by the work of 330 students in our summer school. Train highly motivated and committed youth. Demonstration by civil engineering students can do design. And you know, 
we have a network of government of officials now from right from collector to kind of uh, the the institutions that deal with sanitation a network of academics you know, last time we had 40 academics from different places who came and did the classes we absorbed all their knowledge now we are kind of doing it as a practice this time this time it's much more hands on so you will benefit by that uh, observations education becomes real world engaging in local this is as a teacher what is uh, what i am kind of taking it you know so education can become very much real world crowdsourcing of data for better local analysis otherwise you have a you always complain about lack of data isn't it now you can crowdsource data so that you know it can be used also visualization of data can bring in socio spatial understanding and heat maps can be a monitoring tool we have seen how the red dots can be reduced to more green dots and where heterodox solutions can be discussed and debated locally so if experts come they will get more access to data they can come out with more creative solutions local participants can close contact with local governance become useful participants in development this happened when floods you know struck alapi our whole can alapi team used this mobile apps to locate relief camps to make you know the kind of relief material get into the camps during the camps they made better sanitation arrangements they travel they mobilized 500 volunteers who travel with these people when they went back to their homes we clicked photographs of their homes uploaded it iit bombay civil engineering department divided that into three different categories red category you shouldn't enter that home green category you can start living blue category another expert has to look at it we did the kind of health surveillance you know so we identified where are the diseases we gave it to the dmo who could actually kind of uh, you know direct their teams to wherever those doctors help is needed our team did flood mapping they looked at the levels and now they are developing a digital elevation model so we know the hotspots of flood and this is all done by without help of any of us because they have the weapon of odk this tool which is what you are also going to do so this can be a major weapon to kind of make better analysis and be better action possible so uh, sensitive officials who get information and local assistance institution building making of a new commons that's what we want we want to say that the youth are going to reclaim these canals these canals are our commons not state property it has to be utilized well because this is our future of public health or tourism or whatever limitations of community and citizen participation you know we found that you know there are no citizens who will participate so we made a student citizen to make participate and they can be future citizens who will participate otherwise we didn't say any ready made citizen who will come and participate with us so community participation and all we very quickly tell you know but are there people who are ready to that from engineering science to the practice of engineering transdisciplinary engagement working with a problem that is transdisciplinary engagement working with architecture and social science students mentored by planners and next step is to making it formal within the university system we are all going to oppress you telling the university bring them all to the field for two months so that's our dream to make you all come to the field for two months within your academic curriculum because that's your social responsibility then many things can happen in many sectors better analysis better monitoring which can lead to better governance path ahead uh, this is what you're doing now we have your team leaders who are making detailed plans you have 18 civil engineering graduates who are part of your team solid waste surveys are already done we'll have a plan by december 2018 dwards cluster system will be inaugurated in, in we said early december unforeseen problems because there is a big leak that happened from the settler tank so that was unforeseen so it will be in end of december but we'll go and see the system <clears throat> household dwards systems we are already doing the survey and uh, uh, 
we will replace 20 of them uh, by uh, January. We will monitor those 20, it is different types of systems we will put in and we will see which one works best and then we will scale it up. FSTP plan will be done January 2019, MOOC course that is what they are doing now which being uh, and that will be aired by July. We have a scaling up plan by January and March 2019 we will have a national seminar and consultation with experts whether we are going in the right direction. Otherwise we are just doing things you know. So, we are going to reflect on what we are doing and then you know kind of moving ahead. Winter school is what you will be doing, two more slides, one is this you know you will be having, you will be looking at socio technical options. That is why you will be doing social analysis as well as technology analysis. Solid waste management, organic, inorganic, you will be looking at what is the kind of production of that. In liquid waste management, treated black water, grey water into the canal, household level and public hotspot. This we will not be doing now. And treated water, what is the black element, what is the grey element of this. So, this is the kind of you know crux of what you are going to do. Steps in the plan, one is delineation of watersheds which is already done, civil engineering survey is done. So, we have done this job for you. What you will be doing is socio-economic survey practices and effluents, then you will be arriving at sanitation zones and hotspots through GIS, socio-technical analysis for solutions you should tell us, stakeholder consultations and technical finance, this you may not be able to do. This we have to take from your thing, get into more stakeholders. Stakeholders are households to municipality to NGOs, technology providers. We have to talk with all of them to arrive at specific technology solutions.